Hey Power Appers, Shane Young did a video two days ago and he speaks about why you should ditch groups in Power Apps and should only start using containers. And all the things he says are absolutely true, but I just want to expand on one little thing and these are the horizontal and vertical containers. Let's see for a second what he tells about those containers. Well, the first thing I want to do is we're going to actually go to insert and then under layout, there is going to be a container. So remember horizontal container, vertical containers, those are primarily used in responsive scenarios because you add control and it like lays them out, it spaces them out. And this is what I thought about three months ago about vertical and horizontal containers, only using them here and there in my apps, but really not consistently using them. But recently it just finally clicked and now I really began understanding how to use these containers properly. And I want to expand on this a little bit. So you should definitely go and watch this video by Shane. I'm gonna link it up here. Let's see how we can use vertical and horizontal containers to uh, to build the pop-up the chain built, but uh, yeah, make it not only responsive, but make it really easy for us to format this whole screen. So let's look at what we want to build in the next few minutes. We have this pop-up that just consists of two containers, a horizontal and a vertical one. And then our background, the normal layout that consists of lots and lots and lots of containers nested into each other and even normal containers used. And let's see how this works in action. Um, we have this screen right here. And if we hit send, then we just get a pop-up just like in Shane's video. But the thing is, this is centered in both directions perfectly and this auto adjusts its height. So we can put more text in here and then this scales automatically to the size of the content. This will be more kind of a demo than a really, really deep explanation of how they work. And I don't want to make this video too long. So let's do a quick time-lapse build for the background. And then I go a little more into detail how we build this pop-up. We see we have a kind of sidebar, a header bar, and then we have two columns for our main content. I only filled the left one for demo purposes. So I just did a label in here, text input, a radio group, and then I did a button and I set everything up that it works responsive. So everything gets smaller as I track this smaller. And uh, as you can see, the button just hovers at the bottom of this left side of this left container. So really nice possibilities to set this up. So let's take a little bit more time and build this pop up together in a responsive way as well. So first of all, we set a local variable to enable the pop up to pop it up. The next thing we need to do is to um, create a new container and I'm going to use a horizontal container for that. We put it on the top level, so directly on the screen. We insert a horizontal container for that purpose. And what you probably saw in the time lapse, um, the only thing where I put in actual new properties is for the width of the yeah, top level containers. And this will be parent dot width, which is always the, the screen width when you're on the top level. 
and for the height we put in parent dot height and now this stretches over the whole screen let's use the fill property to make it more obvious now we see yeah we have this kind of graying out uh, pop up in front of the whole screen and uh, next thing we need to do is to put in a white window where we will put our text on and for that we're going to use a vertical container and when you put containers inside of containers it automat it automatically stretches over the whole co uh, outer container we want to disable the flexible width and give it a discrete width of let's say 500 or 600 pixels and in the next step, we want to center it. And this is where I think containers really come in handy now. Here we can justify our content and the container moved to the middle. Here we don't want to stretch it over the whole screen, but we want to center it vertically as well. And then we can input a height. We'll put this to 500 for the moment. We'll put a calculation in there in a second. In the time lapse, you could see that I put in normal containers in there, put a button over the whole container for these rounded edges right here. Right now, we will only use a white background to make it a little easier for us. First of all, we need a close icon right here. So that's the cancel icon. 64 pixels is a little big. Let's use 40 pixels for that. Next, we want to um, put in a header. Next, we want to put in the text. And we will actually make this like in my example. We will uh, choose a number from here and then it should output one, two, three, four, or five lines. Let's use the concat function with a nested sequence for that. So this should produce one line of this is one line for um, for the value you selected right here. And we need to give and we need to enable auto height for that. Right now we have nothing selected, so it's zero lines. Let's put in the next and last thing. And this is the button here and on the button for the moment, we just the pop-up uh, and of course we need to bind the um, variable to the visible property of the container on the top so now we can enable and disable this pop-up and what you can already see is that this white area right here is centered horizontally and vertically and this already works and is set up for uh, a responsive app so no matter how big or small this window is this is centered in both directions every time which is already pretty nice so let's set up this container a little more we want to have a padding of 20 pixels on all sides and you should absolutely start using those padding properties in the containers and then we can put this to the right and then we have it perfectly on the top right with 20 pixels to each direction and we need to close this and then we have three lines of text here we probably want this centered and what we also want is that this stretches over the whole container and then we can just um, use this align property and stretch it. We leave this here on the left side and for the button we want to use the align property and set it to the center. My whole container is a little bit too big. Let's set it to a width of just 300 pixels and everything comes to be, uh, back together smoothly but uh, two more issues 
we need a little more distance between this and the button and there we can use the gap property set it to 20 or this a little bit much set it to 10 now this looks much better and then we want to have kind of auto height for the whole container as well so let's calculate the height of this container and the height of the container is actually the um, y property of the button plus the height of the button and then plus the bottom padding of the container so let's type this really quickly onto the height property it's the button six dot y plus button six height plus self dot padding bottom and then we always have the perfect size for this window right here. Let's try it out. If we just use one line, it's smaller. And if we have five lines, it's bigger. And again, this whole thing is responsive. As I said in the beginning, this was more of a demo and no in-depth tutorial how to use these kind of containers. But I hope this gave you a really good grasp what you can do with these containers and I hope you see the value in them and start using them. Whether you want to build responsive apps or just really nicely set up your normal not responsive apps. If you want to see a more in-depth tutorial about that topic you should definitely leave a comment, tell me exactly what you want to know and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.